see the picture from the end zone of Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. A sea of red for Jim Crosby. The red for the moment is subdued because Nebraska is back to punt as we open the fourth quarter. Florida State has that one-point lead, which is not a big one, <laughs> obviously, but we are in the last quarter of play. Well, if anybody doesn't think Florida State is developing into a national power, I'd, I'd like them to look at the scoreboard right now. Absolutely. I bet you there's some raised eyebrows around the country. Whether it will end up that way, we'll find out in 15 minutes. Gimar punts. It is a high spiral. Gary Henry calls for the fair catch. He has it and bobbles the football. Who's got it? Henry fumbles the football. It is loose. Bonasort lands on it for Florida State. Now the question is, did FSU have it or Nebraska? They say Nebraska at the Florida State 48-yard line. All right, this is going to be a very interesting replay. Uh, somebody, some official thought that he could see under that pile and see that a Nebraska guy had it, had control of it long enough to say that they recovered. Let's watch the punt. And you see, I had a feeling that he was wobbling around too much under that, and he fumbled it, and now it's just a big pile up, and let's see if we can see anything. I don't think since it's coming from an end zone shot that we'll be able to see. Now, somebody kicks it out of now, there. How can, the loose. how can the officials see that somebody had control of it there? I don't there, know. there comes the ball. I, I don't, don't see how you can see that. For the second week in a row, Florida State is victimized by what has to be a questionable call. And that's being polite about it. First and 10, Nebraska, the Seminole 49 yard line. Henry did fumble it, but I don't think he fumbled it away to Nebraska. However, the Cornhuskers do have it. That's the reality. And on first down, Nebraska runs the ball for a three yard game in the person of Andre Franklin. Arthur Scott pinched in and tackled him there, made, did a good job. See Bobby Bowden on the on the sideline throwing his hands down. He's not uh, he's, he's just not happy about that. No, and I don't blame him. I don't want to play the part of a homer, Jim, but I really don't blame him. That, that was a tough call to accept. You got a lot better eyes than we do uh, in our television camera, too, if they could see that. All right, it is second down and seven yards to go. Quinn back to pass. The Seminole defense coming to him. Quinn puts it up. It's way overthrown for the receiver. Butler makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. So it will go as an incompletion. And coming in there with some good pressure was Gary Futch, and he hit Quinn hard after Quinn got that pass away. It'll be third and seven. They may be putting Bobby Butler one-on-one -on -one with Todd Brown after the problems that they've had before because Bobby Butler always draws the toughest receiver on the other side. Uh, no matter who it is, he's been up against some tough ones. Todd Brown's one of the greatest he's faced, I imagine, though. John Noonan and Tim McCready are the split receivers on third and seven for Jeff Quinn and the Cornhuskers at the Florida State 46 after the Gary Henry fumble. Let's hope the defense can hold here. Franklin and Redwine in the backfield. Over the middle, complete, complete and incomplete. All right, dropping that football was Craig Johnson. Johnson had snuck in there to replace Redwine. The fake was to him out of the eye back position, then Quinn faded back to throw. Johnson had it and dropped it. It'll be fourth down and again, Nebraska has to punt, but this time they have a chance to pin Florida State way back. They had a safety blitz on that time. Keith Jones was in there pretty quickly, and maybe that's why the ball wasn't thrown that great, but it was catchable. Mark Motzik limps off the field, but he appears to be okay, just an ankle turn, and in the punt again is Scott Gimmer from the Florida State 46-yard line going to try for the coffin corner. It's a high spiral. This thing's going to go way into the end zone. He kicks it out of the end zone on the fly. So Florida State with 14 minutes and one second left will take the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. I don't think that Nebraska wanted Gimmer to punt that ball out of the end zone. In fact, I'm sure they did. That ball uh, went into the state of Kansas or whatever's <laughs> next to us here. He really really was probably trying to get the ball high and let some, let him down it within in the 10 but he just got too much foot in it don't you know kansas is a dirty word in nebraska oh kansas i thought oklahoma well, was both a dirty of them. Word they're here. both dirty words those darn jayhawks and <laughs> darn sooners that's almost like the florida gators uh, in tallahassee all right first and 10 for the seminoles to give us the plat and a running play and he's dumped for a two-yard loss Coming in there for Nebraska, Henry Wexter from Epworth, Iowa, making the tackle. We have a replay for you as the motion is to the right and Platt tries to cut it back, but it's just a very, very fine tackle. I think that's Kurt Heinlein out of Bellevue, Washington, who had back surgery last year. They weren't sure that he would come back. Back surgery is something that hard to come back from to play football, but he did a good job there. You're watching Seminole Football on WECA Television, Tallahassee's 27. Tom Mees with Jim Crosby. The Seminoles lead at 15 to 14 over the Cornhuskers in Lincoln, but we have 13 minutes to play. Second down at 12. Over the middle, complete and incomplete to Sam Platt. He dropped it at the 20-yard line. I don't think Sam would have had the first down anyway. Stock's still on a deep drop, and Platt just couldn't hang on to the football. 
Well, it would have had to depend on how fancy a running he was going to do after he caught that, but the fact is that he didn't wrap it up, and you got to catch it first. The cardinal rule of pass receiving is going to be third and long, and the Seminoles are, you know, they're not playing it real cozy for being in their end of the field. I like that. I like that. Uh, if you try, so many times you'll see underdog teams come into Nebraska and try and sit on a one or two point lead. That's no lead at all. You got to go the, with the way that you've got gotten into the lead. And that is throwing the football. And here's Stockstill doing just that. He has the time. Now he is hit and down at the six-yard line. The ball came loose, but Stockstill still has it. Nebraska claiming that they have the ball, but not this time. But Florida State has to punt. Okay, let's watch it. Rick Stockstill just had to wait too long to try to find somebody open. Nobody open, so he holds it, holds it. He's hit. He fumbles it, but he falls on it. So now Ron Stark will be under pressure. He'll have to punt from the back of his own end zone. As that fumble, if it does nothing else, the fumble that was called on Gary Henry, it gives Nebraska a chance for great field position. They got to get down there and cover this punt quick. Rick Lindquist is back to cover this punt or receive it. Lindquist is down there at the 35-yard line along with Dave Legal, and Legal is going to be hemmed in and dropped at the 34-yard line. First and 10 for the Cornhuskers at their own 34. That's a great punt by Ron Stark. What a fantastic uh, punt. I was just trying to add that up. That's the value of Ron Stark. He kicked that ball from the six, so that's 44 and then 16 more yards. That's a 60-yard punt, Tom. Unbelievable. Ron Stark. He's the nearest thing I've seen to Ray Guy since Guy played at Mississippi State, the way he's punting the ball this year. The two split ends now for Nebraska. Anthony Steele's in there with Todd Brown. It's first and 10 for the Huskers on their own 34 after that 60-yard odd punt by Ron Stark. Jeff Quinn, the quarterback, will pitch out. And almost no gain for number 30, Craig Johnson. Paul Porowski nailed him in there. Boy, this defense is coming alive. They're really doing a super job. Harris up quickly, Porowski over quickly. And no gain, it'll be second and 10. I'll tell you, you talk about containing to the outside as we get two new receivers in there, McCready and John Noonan. McCready number 24 and Noonan going out to the top of your screen, number 95. Second and 10. The clock running 11.50 left in the game. The Seminoles with that precious one-point lead. Andre Franklin is the running back along with Craig, and Craig is stood up by Porowski after about a three-yard game. Make that Craig Johnson. I keep getting Roger Craig and Craig Johnson mixed up. Well, the the swarming Seminole defense has has made uh, Nebraska get a little cozier here. They're not throwing it like they were when they had them on the run before. But you know, you hold your breath, Jim, with this uh, Nebraska, yeah. where they got a, the likes of Todd Brown and uh, those people in there. And Todd Brown is now out of split end along with Steels. You just hold your breath and hope you can shut them down. Only takes one play. They're down in six now. Huskers need to get up to the 44 yard line of Florida State for a first down. Rather, the 44 of, their, of Nebraska. We have flags in the Nebraska backfield. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Craig Johnson was thrown behind him. Good pressure put on that time for the Seminoles by Arthur Scott. And we may have some holding going on in the Nebraska backfield. It is illegal motion, not holding. And again, the penalty flag. And uh, the pass was no good. Florida State may elect to decline this and force Nebraska to punt. They've already signaled from the bench to decline it. And the Seminoles are going to get it back. And... Wouldn't it be nice if Gary Henry, who was in a crucial point of the game last week against Miami, was heading for the goal line when he slipped down, if he could do something like that right here. I'll tell you what, if you folks ever doubted the fiber of this Florida State team, you cannot doubt it anymore. They had a big turnover there at midfield. They held Nebraska off the board, and with the help of a Ron Stark punt, they forced Nebraska into bad field position, relatively bad anyway, and now Nebraska has to punt. Gamera is in there, and again, Gary Henry in single safety. Scott Gamara gets it away. It's a high spiral. Henry will have to go back to his nine, make that the eight-yard line. Gary Henry is tackled up at the 14-yard line. So with 10.46 left to go in the fourth quarter, the score remains Florida State 15 and Nebraska 14. And we'll keep it right here for the fourth. On first down, Florida State hit a pass to Phil Williams up to the 25-yard line. And uh, the second down play was to Sam Platt, and that got up to the 29. We apologize for missing those two plays, but again, the officials on the field when we gave our cue for a commercial uh, did not pay heed, and there's nothing we can do about that if the officials let the play go on. We now have an injured ball player on the field, and uh, we'll try and identify him for you. I believe it's Andy Means, one of the great linebackers or other cornerbacks for uh, Nebraska. 
getting and, up now. and that would be a big blow to their secondary if they didn't have Andy Means in there for the rest of the game. And you see him limping off and getting a big hand from the Cornhusker fans. I think we got a replay coming up on that, so let's take a look at it. This is a pass at, to Williams here. This is the first play. While we're away on the commercial break, this fine pass was completed from Stockstill to Phil Williams. And uh, coming back, the Seminoles just ran for four yards on the next play. So at second and six, you're up to date. The ball's at the 29-yard line. And here's Tom. All right, second down and six for the Seminoles. Ball on the 29-yard line. Williams in motion. The pitch out to Flat. Flat can go nowhere. It'll be no gain. Wrapped up that time by Toby Williams, the big youngster out of Washington, D.C., the brother of Jimmy Williams. And it'll be third down and a big play for the Seminoles as the clock continues to run now with 9.55 left in the game. And Dr. Tom Osborne on the sideline and his Huskers are down by one point for the Seminoles. You see Eric Ryan, 62, who is getting his first start uh, today. He's done a real fine job at, at guard moving in uh, at the spot where Lee Adams was playing the last few weeks. Florida State football, an exclusive sports presentation of Tallahassee's 27 WECA-TV. Channel 27 in Tallahassee. I'm Tom Bees with Jim Crosby on the third and six. Stock still back to throw. Got plenty of time. Gets rid of it over the middle. Incomplete intended for Whiting. And Whiting was covered on that play, although he may have made the reception if the ball had been thrown a little bit better. Kim Baker was on the coverage. And Florida State's Ron Stark will be called upon to punt again. Kind of looked to me like that might have been tipped a little. Even if he had made the reception, there were a lot of red shirts around him, and he was still about six yards shy of a first down. So Stark has got to do it again. There might be some rush coming from the Cornhuskers here because Dave Legal is the only man back. Yeah, I think he'll try to block it. Ron Stark at his 15. He'll get it off from around the 20. It's a perfect snap. Here comes the pressure. The punt is off. They do not rough him. And Legal will take it in at about the 25. He's being hemmed in, and he'll go down at the 26-yard line where Nebraska will take over first and 10. And making the tackle for Florida State that time, the primary hit, Ricky Williams. That's right, Ricky Williams, who started this game at tailback and has now seen Sam Platt come, over, come in and take over, is doing his job on the special team. A very big series coming up now, Jim, for the Florida State defense, which is among the top 10 of all the defensive teams in this land. That's right. Only giving up 132 yards a game coming into this one, Tom. 9-18 left. Seminoles lead it 15 to 14 on the strength of a Bill Capice field goal from 40 yards. Jeff Quinn and the Huskers have it at their own 26-yard line. Quinn hesitating, now pitching out to Jarvis Redwine. Redwine over the 30. Redwine is out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Keith Jones and Reggie Herring combined to knock him out. This is what puts the excitement in the Cornhusker offense, and it puts you on the edge of your seat when you see Jarvis Redwine heading to the outside. You see him on the option, pitching out at the last second. Paul Borowski just not quite fast enough and got a man on the ground slowing him up. But finally, they get him out of bounds. So a pickup of uh, some 10-plus yards for Redwine, and it's a first and 10 Huskers at their own 37. Making a pickup of 13 on the play. Jarvis Redwine over the 100-yard mark again. Andre Franklin on the first down, and Paul Porowski is in there to help bring him down after a gain of two or three yards. And James Gilbert also having a hand in that tackle for the Seminoles. Ron Simmons, I don't see him in there on this defensive series. Yeah, he's just come out for a few plays, I think. He's been in there most of the time. Uh, no, he's in there. Oh, he's in there now. Okay, yeah. number 50 is in there. That's. I'm glad I was wrong, I'll tell you. I hate to see Simmons out of the lineup. Second down and seven. Franklin and Redwine. The backs in the eye formation, but no running here. Quinn back to throw over the middle. It is complete to the tight end. Jeff Finn for the first down in Seminole territory at the 47. We have a replay on it. Jeff Quinn to Jeff Finn. As you see them lining up in the eye. And he rolls back. He's getting good protection, and that's the key to completing passes right over the middle to Jeff Finn and finally being hit by Paul Porowski. James Gilbert and Scott McLean are out of the Seminole lineup now for this first and 10 play. The ball in Florida State territory at the 47. Clock running, 8.20 left in the game. Seminoles by one. Quinn to the air again. No, the pitch out to Redwine. Seminoles have it contained, though, and Jarvis Redwine brought down for a loss. Porowski and Bobby Butler, and they were ready for marvelous Jarvis on that play. Boy, that's what you got to do. You got to get there before he gets up a good head of steam, and we're going to watch it on the replay again. 
as they fake one step to the right just to try to get the, the defense started in the wrong direction because they figured Jarvis is fast enough to go outside and get there. But Bobby Butler's pretty fast, too. A 4-3-40 he's run. I'll say that's fast. Four, All right. 4-3-3. Three, three. A loss of two on the play. It'll be second down and 12. Jim Cotera in there now, replacing Andre Franklin in the eye backfield. The pitch out again is to... Uh, Craig Johnson. Johnson came in for red wine at time, and Johnson into Seminole, Seminole territory at the 42. That is not enough for the first down. Almost five yards short, and this will bring up a big third and five play. You said it. A big, big play here. The Seminoles have got to hold them on this play and make them turn it back over. I think they're out of field goal range. If they could throw them for a loss and get an incomplete, they'd have to punt. Field goal kicker for the Nebraska Cornhuskers is Kevin Seibel, number 49. He does all the placements. All right, third and five. Craig Johnson is still in there with Cotera in the backfield. Anthony Steeles is in the slot now, and Johnson goes in motion. Quinn yeah. only goes right, and he's going to be blitzed and brought down for a huge loss at the 49-yard line, making the tackle Arthur Scott. I think Keith Jones was a safety blitzing in there. We saw it before. We called it the last time when they had an incomplete pass, and they had good success on it that time in rushing him, and nobody picked up Jones. And see there? Yep. Keith Jones coming around and Arthur Scott helping out. He was so fast I didn't see his number in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll force Nebraska to punt the football. Gary Henry. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now. All alone at the 10 yard line. Let's see what Jamar's punt does this time. It is a wobbly one. It will be short and Henry is going to let it bounce. It goes into the end zone. So the Seminoles get a break. And with 6.55 left to go in the third quarter, Florida State will take the ball first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. And Jim, now time becomes a factor in this game because uh, it's on the side of the team that's ahead, and Florida State is by one point. A good drive is a necessity here. The ideal thing to happen here is to drive it down and use up a lot of the clock and get a score. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, you can't play it cozy. You can't just run it. You got to mix it up still. First and 10 for the Seminoles at the 20-yard line. Stock still rolling right, looking to throw. He does throw, complete. It's a nice, safe pass out of bounds at the 25-yard line to the tight end in that play, and that was Zeke Mowat. Zeke Mowat from Wachula, Florida. Where is that? I wish you hadn't asked that. You don't know, all right. <laughs> it's not been, near Tallahassee anyway. No, I've been through there, but I can't remember where it was. Uh, he, he came from a, a small high school, and you know, he, he they didn't play a lot of real sophisticated ball. They think he's gonna develop to be a real great one here, though. Second down and five, pick up a five on the pass to Mowat. The give now is to Sam Platt. Platt avoids a couple of tacklers. Hard running up to the 28-yard line. Nice run by Sam Platt. Finally dragged down on the play by big number 66, Brent Williams. It'll be second to third down and a big two. And I mean a big third down play. Uh, probably the most overused phrase we, we are having today is a big third down play. But well, this it, is a biggie. I mean, that's the only way to describe it. It's a cliche. And you know what I say about cliches? They are only cliches because they're true. That's right. All right. Williams and Artis Johnson are the split ends for Florida State. The give is to no one. Stock still rolling to Run his it. left. He's going to tuck it. it away, and he's got the first down. He, he listened to you, Jim. <laughs> Stock still ran it, and he picks it up at the 31-yard line. They call timeout to move the chains, but it won't be very long before the clock will be running again. Brent Williams made the tackle. I wonder if that was really designed. I think they wanted to make it look like it was going to be a pass, but not have to put it up. And we see Bobby Bowden on the sideline pacing, and I don't blame him. If I wasn't tied to this headset, I'd be <laughs> pacing too. Nothing's keeping you from walking away, but who wouldn't want to walk away from this one? All right, first and 10 Seminoles in the 31. The give on the running play is to Platt, but they smell that one out. Platt hangs on. He'll be thrown for a loss by Derry Nelson. He was the first one to hit him. Boy, this Nelson is a good one. 6'2", 220 senior out of Fairmont, Nebraska. Let's watch Derry Nelson at, at uh, work here as they run the little counter back to the left. They hope to, hope to pop it through there, but no, Derry Nelson was there and also the linebacker for Brent Williams. Five minutes, 30 seconds left in the game and the clock is running. Second down and 12 for the Seminoles who take their own sweet time breaking out of the huddle and who can blame them? Here's the give to Platt out of the backfield. Seminoles content to run the ball and Platt has been at the line of scrimmage again by Brent Williams. And maybe a loss of a yard now they say no gain. They're going to give him back to the line of scrimmage. Third down now, 12. All right, what do you do here? Nebraska knows it's a passing situation. You see uh, Sam Childers coming into the game with a play. 
do you actually put it up or the way Ron uh, Stark has been punting, do you just try to make them think you're going to pass it and, and get something on the ground and play well, it safe? I would bet my money. I'm a betting man. I believe Bobby's going to put it up here. Let's see what he does. Stark's still rolling right. He's looking for a receiver, pumping down the field long. He is going for Williams complete. Bill Williams has it. First and 10 at the Nebraska 32-yard line. And the Seminole players are going wild on the sideline. Let's take a look at this again. Phil Williams with the biggest catch of his career right here at Lincoln, Nebraska before 76,000 plus fans. Rick Stockstill rolling out. He's looking. He's got all the time in the world to throw, and that's what makes it two defenders there. But Williams really made a good catch. Yeah, he also made some contact, but we won't say anything about that. All right, we'll take it. First and 10 at the Cornhusker 32-yard line. The pitch out to Sam Flat. Flat up the middle inside the 30-yard line to the 29-yard line. Close to the 28 where they'll mark it before Derry Nelson brings him down. Oh, what a play that was. And we have an injured player on the field. It is number 75, Henry Wexter. And while they take a look at him, we'll pause for a commercial message. We'll be back in one minute. Florida State 15, Nebraska 14. Tom Mees with Jim Crosby. Look at that Nebraska bench, Jim. The players kind of de dejected there on the sidelines. And even four minutes left, Florida State at the Nebraska 29 with a second down and seven, and Florida State leads 15-14. Boy, if they could get seven on the board here or oh. eight or anything. I'm telling you. All right, Stock still has them down at the 29. It gives to Platt. He's got some room. Sam Platt inside the 25 to the 24 and gives Sam a lot of credit for hanging on. The Nebraskans led by Kim Baker trying to get the ball out of his arms, trying to strip him of the ball. He hangs on for a big five yards. Okay, we've only got three minutes and 30 seconds left in this ball game. The Seminoles would like to grind out a first down and then get a score and give Nebraska back the ball with a seven or eight point uh, deficit uh, and uh, not enough time to do anything with it. Barry Boldepenny comes in there now on third down and two. Out goes Hardis Johnson. So the extra tight end in there for some blocking. Here's the pitch out to Platt. Platt cuts back. He is close, but he does not have the first down. He does not have the first down at about the 28 yard line. And here comes Bill Capice. Bobby Bowden is not even hesitating. The clock continues to run. We are under three minutes to play. The line of scrimmage is the 28. Well, now they're moving it back to nearer the 29. The kicking tee will be placed, let's call it at the 31-yard line. So this will be a 41-yard attempt, angled to the right. 41-yard attempt, angled to the right. Capiz trying for his fourth field goal. He's into it. The ball is long enough, and the kick is good. So at 2.37 left in the game, the Florida State Seminoles, 18, Nebraska, 14. We'll be back in a moment. Two minutes, 37 seconds is all that separates Florida State University from maybe its biggest win ever in collegiate football. Jim Crosby, I'm Tom Mees with Jim, and boy, we're excited up here in the booth, and we can imagine what the folks in Tallahassee are feeling right about now. You still got to sit on the edge of your seats because oh. it's going to go right down to the wire. All right, Capice will move into the kickoff. Back to receive Anthony Steeles and Ricky Simmons, and don't count the big red of Nebraska out of this one. When you got a Jarvis Redwine, you're always in the game. All right, back in the end zone. Simmons lets it bounce out of the end zone. So Capiz does the job. He's so pumped up. Look at that. He picked up the kick and tease, running off by himself, signaling we're number one to the Florida State contingent. And now was the biggest defensive series of the year. Was he signaling that to the Florida State or the Nebraska contingent? Oh, you might be right. He may have a beat. <laughs> you know, the great thing about that field goal, though, is it takes a little pressure off that they can't go for a field goal and even tie it. Right, they've got to go for the touchdown. So you just got to keep them from getting out of the end zone, but that's a tough thing to do. They've First, done, done it so far in the second half. Sorry, Tom. Well, they're 80 yards away. Are the Nebraska Cornhuskers. First and 10, the fake to Redwine. Quinn straight back to throw now over the middle. Almost intercepted. Incomplete. We're going to have pass interference. Pass interference. They call it on Monk Bonasort, who is pretty dejected about it, but he's not arguing. All right, uh, let's watch it. Not only did Monk uh, commit pass interference, he might have broken up what could have possibly been an interception. Let's look at it. Because there was another player there, Jones coming over. Jones was coming over and zeroing in on it, but Bonasort went over his shoulder. Well, and uh, he's made some big plays, so, you know, they just got to put that out of their mind and hold him here. First and 10 now for Nebraska at their own 35-yard line. That's what you call a, an error of hustle, and coaches can put up with That's that. That's right. They hold them. 
no it problem. Was, it was a marginal call. Could have gone either way, depending upon the, which way the referee saw it. He saw it as pass interference. So we're first and 10, Nebraska at the 35. Quinn straight back to throw again over the middle. It is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Finn. And that time, Bonasar was in the area, but made sure not to push the tight end. And I think Finn should have caught that ball. It was it was a little high, but he's made some good catches today. He's a pretty tall fella, and uh, he's got pretty good hands, so it was catchable. But the bad thing is, he was open. Right, the Seminole defense knows now that Nebraska, unless they pull a draw play or something tricky like a reverse, is going to pass on almost every down. So the front four knows they can go after Jeff Quinn, who really has only been sacked once today, to my memory. Second down and ten. Andre Franklin and Redwine in the backfield. Quinn wants to pass complete to Todd Brown, the split end, but not too big a gain, only for seven yards up to the 42. Todd Brown brings it in, and Monk Bonasort and Herring and Porowski help to bring him down. All right, we'll take the replay on this. Uh, the Seminoles will give them those little short ones like that as long as they can keep them in bounds and keep the clock running because the clock right now is down to about 2.05. 2.05 and running. Third down and three for the Nebraska Cornhuskers at their own 43. The Seminoles lead by four. The pitch out to Redwine. He's got some room. Redwine has the first down at the Florida State 49 before Keith Jones and Monk Bonasort combined to bring him down. All right, we'll watch Jarvis Redwine in action as you see all the Nebraska fans. They're all standing here now. They're in a battle. And the Seminoles let Redwine get a little bit of running room, but a solid tackle by Keith Jones. All three timeouts still remain for Nebraska if they want to use them. Seminoles have two left. 1.48 to go. The clock running. Quinn over the middle. It is complete. We have penalty flags down in the defensive backfield. The pass is complete to Anthony Steeles for a gain of about six, but hold everything. We have some yellow flags in the defensive backfield. It's against Florida State. Well, it's, it's going to give them a first down, but I believe it's going to give them a first down just about where the ball is anyway. As you see the pass the completed, well, I couldn't see what the what the call was from, from that picture, but you see Keith Jones and Porowski finally making the tackle, and here's the ref. Uh, is going to signal pass interference against the Florida State Seminoles. And Bobby Bowden is incensed on the sidelines. Bobby doesn't like that call at all. He doesn't. The interference occurred away from the ball. There you see the situation. 141 left in the game. And look at Bobby. He is really angry. He really is. He took his headset off. And when he does that, you know he's angry. Well, you certainly don't want to lose a game here uh, on, on a call like uh, they lost last week. All right. First and 10 for Nebraska. At the Florida State, 42. Let's hold them Seminoles. Franklin and Redwine are the eye backs behind Quinn. Quinn fakes the handoff. Looking over the middle. And it is incomplete. Intended for McCready. And McCready was wide open in the seam of the zone defense. Uh, down at the 25. But that one was whistled through his hand. Boy, that's scary. Because he certainly was wide open there. And it, was, it just went through his hands. I don't know. I, it looked catchable to me there. 131 left, Tom. And boy, this is a knee knocker. All right. We see uh, on the sideline. Uh, Seminole coaching staff. Yeah, that's uh, Very Coach nervous. Shaw. Coach Shaw signaling uh, to his defense. James Gilbert limps out of the lineup. Mark Motzik, who came out earlier, is back in to replace James Gilbert. Second down and 10. Quinn to throw. Got some pressure over the middle. It is complete to the tight end, Finn. He may have the first down. Bonasort tried to hold him up. If they give him where his body fell, he will have a first down. We have a replay on it. Jeff Quinn looking over the Seminole defense. He's getting good protection again. And uh, Herring was trying to come in, trying to blitz from his linebacker position. But it looks like uh, they're going to measure for it. And the clock has stopped at 119, Tom. And they're saying, go Big Red here. The ball is on the Seminole 32. Let's take a look at the measurement. Is it or is it not? It is not a first down inches short inches short so the situation now is third down and inches third and inches now remember with 119 left Nebraska still has all their timeouts they have not called any as yet and the score is 18 14 Florida State but Nebraska is driving right down the field and now the official signals timeout called for by Nebraska but wait a minute here come the Cornhuskers out of the huddle timeout. here they come out of the huddle What's going to be the call here, gentlemen? We'll keep it here. We don't want to leave at this point. Somebody forgot to let Nebraska in on the fact that they called the timeout. Yeah, the Jeff Quinn called his team out of the huddle, and Tom Osborne says, hold everything. Want to talk things over. Uh, well, we didn't call it, so don't blame it on us. No, <laughs> we didn't call it. They always blame it on television. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll keep it here. We don't want to risk losing any plays uh, here again during the game. We had missed a couple of plays because 
Well, the official on the field did not see our excellent liaison at the sideline there, giving the signal, and so lucky thing we didn't break because Nebraska is going to be ready before minutes up anyway. Yeah. Okay, 119 left, third down and inches for Nebraska. The Seminoles lead it, 18 to 14, and hey, that's unusual. The Nebraska players are asking quiet from their home fans so they can hear the signal. Todd Brown and Anthony Steeles are the wide receivers. Third and very short, just about the length, half a length of a football. The pitch out to Jarvis Redwine. He's got the first down. And the Seminoles hold him up after about a two-yard gain down to the 29. Remember, a field goal does not do Nebraska any good. They must score. It's a late flag. We have I a flag on the play. I think it's going to be against Nebraska. I didn't see that flag amongst the gold pants out there. Let's wait and see the indication. Here comes the referee. It was he thrown. says, holding Nebraska. I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was thrown late, uh, and it was thrown back in the secondary. I think it was one of the... Uh, one of the men downfield was holding up a secondary man, and there's somebody injured. It's a Nebraska player injured on the field. One minute and 13 seconds left in this ball game. Seminoles clinging to a four-point lead, and Nebraska having a 15-yarder stepped off. That's Jarvis Redwine flat on his back at the 30-yard line. If we can get a shot of that, the two uh, Nebraska trainers over Jarvis there Redwine. Is. There he is. Oh, such a great back, and I know that, of course, Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles would like to not ha to have to worry about him, but you don't want to lose a guy that way. No. That is indeed sad. A great All-American and 113 left. Jim, the Seminoles, if they win this game, are going to remember this penalty call. Hell, <laughs> the Nebraska Cornhuskers will remember it more than the Seminoles, I think. Of course, Jarvis Redwine was hurt a couple of times last year. Uh, he, he got hurt uh, against Missouri, I believe, and uh, he, he rebounds pretty well. And he looks like he's in, in a little bit of pain there, and we certainly hope that it's nothing serious. He is a fantastic ball player. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to see any more action today as he's being helped off the field by two trainers. Jarvis Redwine, who is over the 100-yard mark and then some again today for the fourth time this season. And the deserved standing ovation, not only from the big red crowd, but from the Florida State fans who are up here. They're giving Redwine a standing ovation. All right, Tom, with one minute and 13 seconds, you've got to keep a, an offense off the board that's been averaging over 40 points a game, and they've been held to 14 so far. Third down and 12. Third down and 12 for Nebraska. Even if they don't make the first down here, I feel safe in assuming that they'll go for it on the fourth down. So you got to stop them in two downs, really. The ball is at the Seminole 44. Big penalty. Andre Franklin, the only setback behind Quinn. He's going to throw. Here comes the pressure. Quinn rolling to his right. He fumbles the football. Let's see what happens. No, they say he was going forward. It's an incomplete pass. They say that Quinn was going forward. He was hit by a host of Seminoles, including Arthur Scott. All right, let's watch it. I bet you Ron Simmons' eyes got as big as the football there when he saw that ball pop up. He was reaching up, and he, he thought he was going to have a fumble recovery here. And you see Simmons fighting and, and Gary Futch fighting off the blockers. And there's Arthur Scott getting him. Futch actually hit him as his arm was forward. Back to live action, fourth and 12. This could be the ball game. They've got to get down to the Seminole 32-yard line for a first down. Quinn straight back to throw. Here comes the rush. He does throw. It is complete. Out of the 21, a first down for Nebraska. The call is complete to John Noonan, number 95. Well, John Noonan is not even the starting tight end, but he certainly has played a great game. Great coverage there. Tom is just a super throw and a super catch. And boy, this ball game's on the line with 52 seconds. I tell you, you got to admire John Noonan for making that catch and Quinn for making that throw. The game was on the line. 50 seconds, the clock is running. Nebraska has two timeouts left. The ball in the Seminole 21. A field goal does Nebraska no good. The Seminoles lead it by four. Quinn rolling to his left, looking for a receiver. He's going to keep it. And Quinn is hit hard by Herring at the 17-yard line. And the clock continues to run. But now it will stop as Nebraska uses a timeout. 34 seconds left in this game. There was some confusion on the right side there between Butler and Jones as to who was going to go out and cover. And it looked like for a second a wide receiver was going to be left all alone out there. Fortunately, he ran the ball, and they were able to make them spend a timeout. I'll tell you what, anybody with a heart condition in Tallahassee better call your doctor. <laughs> Second week in a row, we've got you, in, I don't know, Heart Attack City, I guess. It was that way in the Orange Bowl last week. I know one thing, my heart's right in my throat now, Tom. It'll be second uh, down and five. They give uh, Quinn five yards in the carry. They sent Alfonso Carriker back in at, at tackle, a freshman coming in there. Boy, he'll remember this 34 seconds, I'm sure, when he came back in before all these fans. 
and uh, they just want to keep a fresh they want to keep fresh people in there there was a little running to chase down the quarterback the last time the tackles had to run uh, fairly far and Gary Futch has run a lot on the last two plays and and done a good job catching up you should see the Seminole team most of them about 90 percent of them either standing at or kneeling right at the line there is Bobby Bowden here we go hoping his defense can hold second down and five Nebraska at the Seminole 16 yard line down at the 16 not the 21 as I'd call it Quinn looking to throw pumping now faking Quinn pitches out to Nebraska's high back Florida State's got the football. Let's see who's got it. I believe Florida State has it. Let's wait and see for the official. Is it Florida State or Nebraska? Oh, they're going to give it to Nebraska. All right, let's the see. The give was to Roger Craig. He's inside the five of first and goal, and Nebraska calls time with 21 right, seconds left. What's the replay here? Here's the pitch out to Craig. Remember Jarvis Redmine's on the bench. And here's Bobby Butler. Uh, he gets away from Butler, and the big tackle there. The ball is loose. Let's see if we can find out who recovered it. The ball is loose, and he must have gotten it back. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have it in that picture. I don't know who got it. The ball's at the three. 21 seconds left. That was Roger Craig on that run. Craig fumbled. It appeared to me, fans, as if Florida State recovered, and I think you can see why on that replay as we looked at it. I couldn't see how any red shirts could get in there and get it. But they did. So the situation is this. It is first and goal for Nebraska on the Florida State three. Nebraska has just called their last timeout. They have no more timeouts remaining. They have to get a touchdown. The score is Florida State 18, Nebraska 14. There you see it. The Seminoles have two timeouts remaining, but the game is on the line. And I'll tell you, momentum has switched teams again. He's wearing a red and white shirt. I'm too nervous to talk, Tom. You talk. <laughs> oh, listen, I'll tell you. I love doing these kind of games, but... Uh, they're Boy, up. Sure be nice to come out on the winning side of one, wouldn't it? Yeah, it sure would. Big, big play. Come All on, right. though. Todd Brown is the split end of the top of the screen. Quinn asking the home crowd for quiet and he gets it now, obviously. Roger Quaig now in a slot position. First and goal at the three. Quinn rolling left, looking into the end zone. It is complete, but down to the two. In down to, no, incomplete. They call it incomplete. All right. Uh, Steeles thought he caught that ball, but the official says no. But that does really, that's stop a the break. clock. That's a break for Nebraska. That's right. That does stop the clock at 17 seconds. And we're going to have another look at it as Quinn rolls to his left. And good pressure by Porowski. And uh, he just couldn't haul it in there. If he had, he'd have been at the one. Second down, but the downs really aren't important. Second to go at the three. 17 seconds. That's the important thing. No timeouts, remember, for Nebraska. Ball still on the three. Quinn rolling to the left. He's got the time. He's now under a rush. Porowski's got a fumble. Fumble. Florida State's going to win this football game. They've got the ball. Florida State. And they're going wow. Florida State will upset the third rank soon or third rank Cornhuskers in Nebraska. I even forget what state I'm in here. <laughs> and you know who the man was that pulled him loose from that ball? Mr. Paul. I got to shake that man's hand at the end of the game. How about this, huh? How about it? I tell you, I want to see up tonight with some partying. And I want to tell you right now, before I forget it, the Seminole team's going to be in at 9.30. I want to see that airport crowded. That's a Texas International Charter, right, Jim? That's right. The they charter? Leave, they leave here at 6 o'clock. They get there at 9.30. I want to see a traffic jam at that airport like you've never had before. The Seminole stock still lays down. Nebraska has no timeouts. The clock running down. Five, four, three, two, one. The game is over. And the Seminoles have won the biggest football victory in Florida State history. Look at Ricky Stockstill. He's got the ball. And here comes Childers over, and the Seminoles are mobbing him. The final score from Lincoln, Nebraska, is Florida State 18. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska 14 will be back in a moment. The Nebraska Cornhuskers have gone down to defeat this afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska. The 108th consecutive sellout still standing, Jim, in stunned silence as the Seminoles of Florida State shut them down in the second half, came up with 15 points of their own, 18 to 14. How about running down the scoring plays in the game for us? All right, we're going we're gonna to have a look at some replays on the scoring plays. Well, we're going to replay uh, that fumble by Quinn. All right, the rel all right yes, that's what we're going to see, the fumble, the last offensive play of the game for Nebraska as uh, Quinn is rolling out, and here comes Paul Porowski. He grabs him by the shoulder pad, 
pulls him loose from the ball, and there's Gary Futch yep. falling on it. And uh, that wrapped it up for all intents and purposes. Now we go down the scoring plays as the Nebraska band serenades a disappointed crowd out of the stadium. Well, the Florida State Seminoles shut out the highest powered offensive unit in the nation in the second half. They got no points. But it looked real tough for a while because Jeff Quinn passed to Todd Brown with 154 left in the first quarter.